So, welcome back to the MongoDB stand at AWS reInvent, and welcome back to our live streams that are happening on YouTube and LinkedIn. This is our last live stream of the show, but we've, in my view, saved the best to last. We're delighted to be joined Thank you. by Guillermo Rauch, the CEO of Vercel. Guillermo, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Excellent. Excellent. So, for our audience and, and the people here, just tell us a little bit about Vercel and, and Next.js as well, too. Yeah, so Vercel is the platform for front-end developers. Uh, we created a popular framework called Next.js. Mm -hmm. our, our ecosystem is very based on open source technology. Mm -hmm. So we contribute a number of front-end frameworks like Next.js, Svelte, et cetera. And we're here at AWS reInvent because when you deploy these frameworks to the Vercel cloud, we turn your front-end into serverless infrastructure. So we help companies scale and operate the fastest websites and front-ends on the internet. And we partner with companies like Mongo to get data into those front ends. Excellent. And, and talk to us about those companies that Vercel serves. What are, kind of customers do you have and what's the typical use cases? Yeah, so a lot of our customers are in e-commerce. Okay. So we have uh, folks that want to speed up their storefronts. So they use Next.js and Vercel and they connect to headless commerce platforms. We have customers in SaaS, mm -hmm. cutting edge technology. We have customers in media, like we talked about the Washington Post and how they served millions of people that were um, watching the elections uh, okay. in real time on the yes. web. And they used uh, Next.js and Vercel to scale up to lots of traffic, while also iterating very, very fast on these front-end projects. So scale is, is superb. I know when we speak about Next.js and Vercel, numbers are in the millions. And, and even in the billions, when we're talking about requests, how many billion requests is, are you handling a, a month? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fluctuating rapidly. Okay, okay. A, because we're serverless, of course, but also because of Black Friday, right? Yeah. But uh, we're seeing upwards of uh, 35 billion requests a week hitting wow. our wow. edge network. And I think another common theme that we have with Mongo is this idea of going global. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. you deploy it over cell, we don't ask you to say, like, what region do you want to deploy to? It's like, we deploy globally. We operate an edge network. So when we talk about all these requests, you can think about them going to like dozens of cities mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. all over the world where we're collocating your front end as close as possible to the customer to make uh, your applications really fast. That's fascinating. And so what sort of tech stack enables that sort of scale and speed? For sure. So at the very edge of the network, we start with running edge compute. Okay. What does this mean? You can start um, kind of you take the request and you can say, I want to render a page as fast as possible, but I also want to make it dynamic. I want to empower the customer to say, what are your preferences? Uh, what's your order history? What is the mm -hmm. price mm -hmm. on this page? Uh, can I do an experiment? Can I turn on feature flags? So a lot of the workloads that we do are dynamic. So we run JavaScript and WebAssembly at the edge, and then we also run it at the region, close to the database. Okay. So kind of to empower you to co-locate your compute where it belongs. Wow, fascinating. So before we talk about MongoDB and Vercel, let's go back a little bit because you created and open sourced Mongoose. So yes, back in the day. Essentially our OD ODM library for MongoDB and Node.js. What prompted you to do that? How did it come about? And, and it's still widely being used. Yeah, so the key thing is, for me, it's always started with the developer experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I first used Mongo, I wanted to make it ergonomic for myself. And okay. going back to the I tech stack. I love that stack, word, ergonomic. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I love it. It's like you have a tool, it has <laughs> to be ergonomic, right? Yeah. Um, so nowadays we call this developer experience. At the time, I didn't have the moniker for it, mm -hmm. but I want to move fast. And my stack, and the stack that a lot of folks use with Next.js and Vercel, is JavaScript and TypeScript, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So V8, Node.js. And I wanted this document experience to be as native as possible to my runtime environment. Sure. So Always Mongoose fine. was kind of that layer on top. And the reason that I gravitated to Mongo, and I think why our Mongo integration is so popular in Vercel today, is that Mongo is always so well fitting mm -hmm. to this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The native JSON support, the document orientation is schema-less, moving fast, dynamism. So it's, it was kind of like a match made in heaven. But yeah, for us, it all starts with that developer experience. Excellent. And I know the community love it. And it's still being maintained. And I think it's version 6.7 or something now, as yep. far as I recall. That's brilliant. So taking us from that right up to date, you joined us in New York in June at MongoDB World. And you joined Sahir Azam, our chief product officer on stage, to talk about 
the MongoDB Vercel integration. Now, using Vercel with MongoDB was easy enough, but we made it super simple. Talk to us about that integration. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting because we basically made it a couple of clicks. Yeah. And going back to this idea of separating the front end from the back end, right? People used to build very monolithically. Mm -hmm. You would have like this gigantic server, obviously running in one location, in one data center, maybe on prem. But now the world is all about microservices, sure. micro front ends, functions, edge functions. So you start breaking down that monolith. So Vercel needs to grab its data from somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. To make a dynamic front end possible. So with the MongoDB integration, you're a couple clicks away from bringing dynamic data into this front end. And because of the JS ecosystem and, and the framework ecosystem that we support, like React, Next, Vue, et cetera, we're just making it so easy to bring these documents into your front end. So you know, you're a couple clicks and a couple yeah. lines of code away from a, a really fast performing application. And it is, it's not an exaggeration. It is just a couple of clicks and bar leaving to essentially, you know, associate the MongoDB account with Vercel. All of this has been done on Vercel. That's it. Correct. You go there. Without leaving the context of where you work. And this is also what we're seeing customers give us great feedback about mm -hmm. is they don't want to leave the environment that they're already in, right? Yes. A, a lot of what makes Vercel so powerful is that we infer the right serverless and edge infrastructure from the application itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we introduce this concept of what we call edge middleware. So when you write your Next.js application and you run the dev server and you run it on localhost, that middleware logic that allows for dynamic routing runs locally. It runs like in an old-fashioned server. Mm -hmm. When you deploy to the cloud, we take this application apart and we create global resources. So, for example, the middleware, we push it to the edge. Yes. So think of this as like infrastructure from code. And, and developers keep telling us that this improves their quality of life because they don't have to think about how their application relates to some CDN, to some infrastructure over here. So when we offer them to create Mongo in this kind of manner without mm. leaving that experience, it took off. So yeah. we're, we're very happy to continue to invest and partner here. No, and we're super delighted. I mean, it sits there in the Vercel marketplace. Correct. It's doing very well at the moment. Correct. Um, and we and have it's... a super cool uh, starter kit. Yes. So we, we created an application that uses all of the best practices for really, really high performance. So it uses Next.js, Next.js ISR, it's dynamic, it has built-in caching. All, all of the cool things about Next.js and Vercel are represented in that application. So if you go to the template marketplace, you find this MongoDB starter mm -hmm. that combines the integration with a lot of code that you can already reuse. Yeah, and, and I know like we see a lot of demos and when people are doing live streaming and code, they're saying, oh, this will only take a minute, but it literally just takes Correct. a minute. You were on stage, building that starter kit within a minute. Yeah, or maybe maybe even less. I don't even <laughs> like to think about minutes. I like to think about milliseconds or seconds. <laughs> Always trying to make that developer job easier <laughs> yeah. and better. Yeah. So for us, we're delighted to be on the marketplace. We have tutorials on our docs. And in fact, if you go to the MongoDB docs and you scroll down, we have a partner integration partners tab. You're the only integration that we have there at the moment. So we're thrilled with this. But we also love to create, and, and Jesse Hall is here as well too, content on the, our developer hub. So I think when I looked at it last time, we have about 18 Vercel nice. Next.js articles on our developer wow. hub. So for our audience who want to learn more, that's a really, really good starter place to go to, as Absolutely. well as your own docs. Yeah, yeah, and templates and examples that we constantly publish. Excellent, excellent. So we're at reInvent. How has the show been for you? Um, you were part of the serverless keynote? Yeah, it's been incredible. Um, we were early adopters of serverless. And I think the theme that I've been telling a lot of people that I'm sensing from this conference is that serverless has reached that maturity point. Mm -hmm. Holly, the VP of serverless during the keynote said, we recommend customers to start with the highest level of abstraction that we offer in the serverless ecosystem. So that maturity, I think, is a, is a vote of confidence. And in, in, uh, for us, it's validation that as early adopters of that technology, we're in the right trajectory. And then we spoke to this level of scale that we've seen, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Like 100 million deployments over the past two years wow. during the high growth million. phase of the company. 100 million. 100 million wow. in the last few years. Without serverless technology, that would have been impossible. Imagine creating like 100 million, I don't know, like <laughs> Kubernetes clusters or, or oh, whatever. So, that'd be a nightmare. Uh, or VMs or conta even containers, right? So yeah. we're, we're very excited to be um, at the frontier of this, um, no pun intended, this front end serverless space and uh, partnering with uh, exceptional companies like Mongo that share our values, I think, in this 
developer-led and developer uh, experience uh, angle. Totally. So have you been around the show floor, the expo hall? Have you seen anything that excites you, anything that stood out for you at reInvent this year? Yeah, I'm, I was in bias. I'm really excited about <laughs> uh, uh, spending time with our customers and meeting them face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one takeaway was meeting a very, very large streaming media company that is putting us in smart TVs. I was like, yeah, we're at the edge, and we serve a lot of websites and web applications. I didn't know that we're already in smart TVs. Uh, so it, it's been great to uh, catch up with customers, uh, hear what they're saying. There's a lot of excitement about the edge being the next frontier, mm -hmm, right? Like, mm -hmm. okay, I, I went serverless. That helped me with the operational model. I moved faster. My developers are happy. But there's always this appetite for more speed, more personalization, closer to the visitor. So telling those stories of how we're enabling companies to, to do this today has is, is been it's been awesome. That's amazing to be enabling the companies and the developers to do things faster and easier and to let them just get on with their day job and abstract Correct. away all the complexity. Yes. So we're at reInvent, but you had your own event last month as well too, Next.js Conf in San Francisco. What was announced there? So we announced Next.js 13, which is the probably the most important evolution mm -hmm. in the history of Next.js for a couple reasons that I already touched on. One is as it's edge first. So going, going through this theme of like, how can we get the developer to personalize and make their applications as dynamic as possible for each and every visitor? So we call the underlying theme dynamic at the speed of static. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think folks over the past few years have gotten excited about, you know, single page applications, Jamstack, static generators. But at scale, you need to make things really dynamic. You have lots of data points, lots of users, lots of feature flags, mm -hmm, experiments, mm -hmm. and things like that. So Next.js 13 gives you the experience of building a static app. It's like super fast, super easy, but it's truly, truly dynamic. So um, that goes hand in hand with our streaming capability. So when you, when you go to an e-commerce shop and you go to a product page, really what you're most interested in when you, when you go to that page mm -hmm. is the product, the prize, the gallery. Yes. Perhaps you haven't even gotten to scroll down yet, like the user <laughs> reviews and things like that. So the way that a lot of folks have been building for the web is that they do a one-shot render. Okay. It's like okay. all or nothing. Yes. Yes. And then sometimes you stare at a blank page for a long time. And, yeah. and you're waiting for it to build. <laughs> and then yeah. it all comes. Yeah. yeah. So with Next.js 13, we're bringing streaming into, oh, wow. okay. you know, a technology has existed for a while, but mm -hmm. it's not broadly democratized. So bringing streaming into every page and into every developer's hands. And um, yeah, that is a huge thing for us. We also announced TurboPack. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the components that Next.js built on is Webpack, the most popular bundler in the JavaScript ecosystem. So we mentioned 17% of the top 1,000 sites use Webpack to bundle their JavaScript sure. and deliver to their clients. I think we looked at uh, the Fortune 5000 one time and like it was like, Wait, every <laughs> single one of these uses Webpack. Brilliant. That's a great reference. <laughs> yeah. So um, the JavaScript ecosystem built a lot of tooling in JavaScript, mm -hmm. right? Because we're kind of in, this, in that experimental phase of the ecosystem. But JavaScript tooling has not been able to keep up with the demands of the sizes of the code bases that we're seeing. Yes. Uh, especially with like TypeScript, like folks have, enterprises have been able to like adopt and, and, and really create code bases with, with lots of engineers in them, et cetera. So we had to rewrite a lot of that tooling in Rust. Okay. And we announced TurboPack, which is 700 times, sometimes I'm shy to say this number because like <laughs> it almost doesn't make sense. Go for but it. Go for it's it. up to 700 times faster than Webpack. Oh, wow. And again, going back to the developer experience, it's like this really translates into like you type something and you're seeing the result on the screen mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. real time. Amazing. So it's, uh, it's, it's a huge step forward for the community. It's open source. Obviously, there's advantages to using it on Vercel, uh, which, which relates to sharing your work across teams and mm -hmm. organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we're, um, it's early days still. Like we're, we're working a lot in like stabilizing these features, but you can already use Next.js 13 um, and, and take advantage of all this. And you mentioned the community there in the JavaScript community. Vercel are huge contributors to that community. Like employees of Vercel are working on all of these community-based open source projects to help developers globally. Yeah, we employ the creator of Webpack, mm -hmm. and he himself, uh, you know, they say, once you're lucky, twice you're <laughs> Tobias <laughs> yeah. from Webpack. Uh, he created the next generation of Rust-based tooling, and we employ the uh, the creator of Svelte, 
Mm -hmm. Another framework that I'm extremely excited about, one of the leanest JavaScript technologies out there. Again, extremely dynamic. Uh, 1.0 of SvelteKit is coming up. Brilliant. It's also going to focus a lot on edge rendering. Uh, it's extremely, extremely fast. Uh, in Another thing about uh, the JS ecosystem is a lot of folks are coming from other stacks, right? Like mm -hmm. .NET, Java, mm -hmm. et cetera. And Svelte, I hear from customers, gives them that ramp on ramp okay. into this yes, ecosystem yep. in a very easy way. Okay. So we contribute a lot to open source and, and we support upwards to 35 frameworks natively wow. on Vercel. So you just That's import your great. repo and we deploy it. It's pretty easy. Excellent, excellent. So. This has been a superb conversation, so much to absorb. What's next for Vercel and MongoDB? So the key thing is continue to grow and deepen our integration. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, implementing all the serverless features, bringing MongoDB to the edge is something I'm extremely excited about. Uh, continuing to serve all of the developers in the ecosystem that have been used to a more traditional server focus, right? Like Node.js plus Mongoose, helping them make the transition to this serverless and edge ways of building applications continue to create content for developers. Um, I'm using it myself. I, really? I run the integration myself. Oh. So yeah, continue to give feedback to the team to make the best possible integration here as well. Excellent. That's a high bar for the team to have to get your feedback coming back into them yeah. as well too. Well, this has been a superb conversation. We've really enjoyed having you join us here. As we said at the beginning, this is our last live stream, but it couldn't have gone any better. The other better thing is that Argentina have gone through to the next yes. phase of yeah. the World Cup, right? <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Well, we wish you all the luck in that as well, too. Thank you. So from all of us here at reInvent and the MongoDB stand, Guillermo, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Likewise.